Hi everybody, my name is Sajan P. Philip. I am working as an assistant professor in the department of ECE, Banariaman Institute of Technology, Erod, Tamil Nadu. Today in this video lecture, I am trying to illustrate Ohm's law with some analogies and I am trying to derive a mathematical expressions for Ohm's law through which I can explain the working of a resistor in the circuit. Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that at constant temperature the current through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the potential difference across the two points. That is the current passing through a conductor at constant temperature is directly proportional to the potential difference across the two points. Here I have shown a conductor. This blue color is a conductor and I have shown some electrons in this and you can see that electrons will all, always flow from the negative potential of the battery to the positive potential of the battery. Here we have connected a, a voltage source which provides the volt, potential difference across the conductor and you can see that the current will flow in this direction and Ohm's law states that the current flow through this conductor between these two ends I have marked it with some red color lines the current flow between this conductor uh, end points is directly proportional to the potential difference across the two points. To better understand Ohm's law, let us look at a water analogy. Here we have two tanks, tank A and tank B. You can see that the water level in tank level is more compared to tank le uh, water level in tank B. So it is sure that because of the level difference, there is a pressure difference between the tank A and tank B. Because of this pressure difference, we can see that the water will flow from tank A to tank B till the levels on both the tanks is same. So this is what Ohm's law states. The current flow through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across the endpoints. Here the water current, the water current flow is directly proportional to the pressure difference between the two tanks. Now let us try to derive a mathematical expression for Ohm's law. From Ohm's law we have learned that the current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference otherwise voltage across the two ends of the conductor. And we know that since it is proportional when voltage increases current also increases when voltage decreases current also decreases so if we take the ratio of voltage and current it will be always a constant and that constant we have named it as R and that is known as resistance this identity is very important in electronics and electrical circuits we will normally try to remember like this V is equal to I into R it has another forms like V by I is equal to R otherwise I is equal to V by R it has different forms so this is the mathematical expression of Ohm's law V is equal to I into R. Here you can see the voltage current plot of the Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that when potential difference across the conductor increases, current increases. So there is a linear relationship between the voltage and current in the materials which obeys Ohm's law. So such kind of materials we will call it as ohmic materials. Ohmic materials or linear materials. We can't say that almost all the electronics or electrical devices are obeying this Ohm, Ohm's law because some devices has VA plot like this, some other devices have a VA plot like this. So they are not considered as ohmic materials. Their voltage and current are not proportional. 
So we can't say that Ohm's law is a universal law. And one more problem is that Ohm's law states that at constant temperature, at constant temperature. So when the temperature varies, the resistance also will vary. So the voltage current proportionality will not hold. So that is also very important about Ohm's law. The unit of resistance is Ohm. That is given because of George Simon George Simon Ohm who is behind the Ohm's law. It is represented using the Greek letter Ohm and while writing for example 5 Ohm 4 ohm we are using this symbol to represent the resistance. The below images show the symbol of resistance. This is IEEE symbol and this is IEC symbol. Now let us look at the factors affecting the value of a resistor made with some material. We can through experiments we can show that the resistance is proportional to length of the material and inversely proportional to area of the material. We can consider like this. When we connect a resistor to the circuit, some current is flowing through it. We know that some electrons are flowing through the resistor. So if the length, if, if the resistor has more length, the electron has to travel for a long time through the resistor and it will increase the resistance. So the resistance is directly proportional to L that is length of the material and this is area which is known as cross sectional area and resistance is inversely proportional to the cross sectional area. Let us think like that. If the cross sectional area is more we can see that from one end to another end the electrons get more space to travel. That means more electrons can flow and the resistance will be less. So the resistance is directly proportional to length of a material and inversely proportional to area of the material. So if we can remove the proportionality like this R is equal to rho L by A and this proportionality constant rho is known as specific resistance. Specific resistance or resistivity. Let us look what is rho. Rho can be written like R A by L. Now consider area is 1, length is 1, then rho is equal to R. That is rho is the resistance of a material or resistivity or specific resistance is the resistivity of a material of unit length and unit area. If you do a search in the internet, you can find out the resistivity of different materials like copper, iron, aluminium, etc. From these discussions, we can conclude that the main function of a resistor in any circuit is to limit the amount of current or to produce a desired voltage drop. So below shown is the resistor. So the main function of a resistor in a circuit is to create resistance. That means limit the amount of current or produce some voltage drop. We can imagine like a blockage in a pipe carrying water. If there is a blockage in the pipe carrying water, it limits the flow of water. Let us look at three cases of water analogy in this picture. In case 1 you can see that there is no blockage so the entire water will flow through the pipe. That is similar to a circuit without any resistance. The current will flow through the circuit without any problem. Now let us look into case 2. Here you can see that there is a blockage that is half of the pipe. So the water is reduced in this pipe. And also we can show that the pressure or speed of the water is less due to this blockage. In case 3, the size of the blockage is again increased. So we can see that the water level, uh, the water flow, the amount of water flowing is again reduced. 
so again there will be a reduction in the speed so this is similar to a resistor behaving in a circuit so we can make a comparison like this the current flow in a circuit is similar to water flow in a pipe system and the resistor in a circuit is similar to a blockage in the water flowing pipe and voltage in the circuit is similar to speed or pressure difference in a pipe system and the current in a circuit is similar to the water current or the amount of water flowing in the pipe.